Okay. All right. So so let's uh, proceed. Okay. So let's. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is to formally talk about this uh, this zero one n as a vector space. Okay, so right now we have seen informally what uh, that 0 1 n can be thought of as a vector space we are thinking about the, the linear code as a as, as uh, m times g etc but it is good to formally see it see this uh, 0 1 n as a vector space and then you will see some nice vector space arguments will come in okay so we saw gaussian elimination matrix and operations and all that but it is good to see it as a vector space okay so some formal definitions the so first thing you will need is uh, something about a group okay so group is a uh, is a set g okay so finite okay so we'll always talk about finite but uh, just to it can be infinite also set g with uh, one binary operation what is a binary operation a binary operation which we will denote as plus which is basically a mapping from g cross g to g okay so what is the mapping from g cross g to g yeah take any two elements of g it will do this operation and produce another element of g okay so it's the binary operation which i'll denote as plus a set g with one one binary operation is a group if if some three conditions are satisfied okay so how many conditions three conditions two conditions three conditions first one would be associativity associativity okay so basically what you need is a plus b plus c should be the same as a plus b plus c okay so that's associativity second property is you need an identity Okay, identity as in there should be one special element in G which we will denote 0 there exists 0 in G such that what happens a plus 0 equals 0 plus a equals a okay so this is for all a b c and G this is for all a and G okay I am going a little bit fast because I am hoping you have seen these definitions once before in your life so just a quick recap of what a group is any other property inverse not bad i think everybody seems to know a group quite well okay inverse okay for all a and g there exists uh, let's say what i'll call minus a in g such that a plus minus a equals minus a plus a equals this additive identity is 0 okay so the group operation will usually take us plus but it can be anything else okay so you can put any other shape there it's just a notation it doesn't change anything okay so this is a group okay so there are lots of examples i can give you uh, for instance the most interesting example for us is this 0 comma 1 okay this can be a group with what operation addition modulo 2 right what would be the identity 0 okay inverse of 0 is inverse of 1 is 1 itself okay so that is the interesting part here okay so minus 1 what is called minus 1 is the same as 1 okay so when you have addition modulo 2 it is important okay so this is an example of a group of course there are very more many more complicated examples of groups okay and then the next thing we'll need is a field okay a field is a little bit more complicated so let me just make sure i have have it somewhere to reproduce carefully okay okay a field is a set f with two binary operations ok 
okay, uh, which we will denote as plus and dot. Okay, so plus is like the addition and dot is like the multiplication. Okay, so plus and dot. This is said to be a field. Once again, we'll think of this set as finite in most in throughout this course, but almost everywhere. Okay, in other places, uh, I mean there are there are also infinite fields, of course. Okay, so when is this said to be a field? F comma plus, okay, should be a what's called an abelian group. Okay, so I I forgot to define abelian group. A group is said to be abelian if if it's also commutative. The addition operation is commutative. Okay, so the operation is commutative means group becomes abelian okay so f comma plus should be an abelian group okay so a field should have addition okay so any you should have a plus operation should be defined let's say zero is the additive identity okay all right so basically the idea is a group is something where you can do one operation okay so either addition or multiplication or some other operation okay a field is something where you can do both addition as well as multiplication consistently okay so that's the idea behind the field so for instance uh, the integers are are a group under addition of course under multiplication they won't be a group why inverse will not exist right so two and all has no inverse on the other hand if you look at rational numbers they are a group under addition under multiplication they are not quite a group why are they not quite a group under multiplication zero will be a problem okay so you have to remove that zero so that's the second definition okay f minus the zero which is the additive identity comma dot should be a abelian group again okay so that's the second condition for field okay so this f minus the zero is typically denoted as f star in a field it's the it's what's called the multiplicative group of a field is f star it's it's the set f without the zero okay so this is the second condition okay so this makes addition and multiplication possible in that field so that's the basic idea okay so whenever you have a field or something the group the usually the problem is the inverse right most things will naturally be groups you can extend them inverse is the problem okay so always that will show up in many cases the third property so the third 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 property so usually you will denote by one the multiplicative identity so it's clear what i mean by multiplicative identity right so in this group f star comma dot there will be a identity element okay so that identity element i will call as multiplicative identity okay are there any questions at this point it's i hope it's clear okay so the additive identity and the multiplicative identity have to be distinct for the field to be a little bit meaningful okay so otherwise it will not become meaningful at all okay so yeah. so zero will be different from one okay that's the idea so the third point tells you how the addition and multiplication interact okay so that's the distributivity property a dot b plus c should be equal to what a dot b plus b dot c so this is for all and people are so awake so late in the evening i have to be watchful a dot c for all a b c in f okay so this is the distributivity property so you can see how the natural things that you take for granted in the rational field for instance are being abstract are being made abstract in this definition okay so you have a field f which is which has an addition operation with respect to which it is an abelian group it has an additive identity zero then you throw the additive identity zero out of the out of that set f what remains should be a multiplicative group with a multiplicative identity one okay so you can see it should show up even for the real numbers the same things hold okay but the real field is significantly more complex we won't go anywhere near that but this is these are the examples of fields okay so in this course we'll be mostly concerned with fields which are finite Okay, so for instance, the zero one can be made into a field. I'll show you how. It's, it's very trivial, but nevertheless, it's interesting to see how something so simple can be a field. Okay, it's usually denoted f two or g of two when it is a field. Zero comma one 
additive addition and multiplication are basically integer addition integer multiplication modulo 2 okay so remember when i define a field what are the various things i should define i should define the set and i should define the two operations plus and minus plus and dot okay addition and multiplication so i'm defining the set first i'm saying 0 comma 1 but i'm calling it as f2 or g of 2 why when i say that implicitly the operation is also defined okay so when i say 0 comma 1 as f2 what does it mean i'm talking about the set 0 1 with addition and multiplication modulo 2 that's what it means okay so that's the idea gf the expansion is galois galois field galois is a, it's a very very famous french mathematician who died when he was 32 or something he's very young when he died so it's named after him okay so you have to check all the field properties but they are quite trivial to check okay it's easy to it's easy to see that 0 comma 1 with plus mod 2 is a group okay so you add it's very very easy to see what about 1 by itself it's clearly a multiplicative group you know I mean, it's very little that you can, can go wrong if you just have one <laughs> when you just add you can't do anything more to it is that okay okay so one curious thing in this field is see usually we think of also subtraction in a field right in a field if you can add you can also subtract how will you subtract how will you do a minus b in a field a minus b is a plus minus b okay see the additive inverse for b is defined so with just the one operation plus you can also do subtraction subtraction is just an artificial operation so it's a different way of calling addition okay so you just do a plus minus b you get subtraction okay so what happens in this g of 2 what is the subtraction minus b is same as plus b right so that's the curious thing about this field okay addition and subtraction are the exact same operations okay so any minus you have can be made happily into a plus okay in any long drawn algebraic manipulation that you do with multiplication and all that any simplification you want to do if you know your field is g of 2 then all minuses become plus okay and then 1 plus 1 then is equal to what 0 okay so that's the curious thing so addition and subtraction become equivalent okay so if you're so used to typing documents with spell check suddenly when you write something it doesn't look right I mean have I spelt addition correctly is it correct or wrong so you are my spell check okay so you should tell me if it's if I'm making a mistake okay so so this is a curious thing about a field okay about this field in particular okay so there are other fields I'll give you another example I'll give you a very generic example of what's called FP or again GFP okay 0 1 2 so on till P minus 1 and what is P P should be a prime number okay so you should take it as a prime number clearly 2 is a special case right if you take p equal to 2 2 is a prime number so that's one special case and addition and multiplication once again you can do modulo p okay so one can show that this is a field it requires some work okay so it's not very trivial to show that this is a field okay what is very trivial what are the among the three properties which property is very trivial plus is very trivial right so you add two things modulo p i will obviously get something from 0 to p minus 1 so addition is okay it's very trivial multiplication so it's a bit closure is okay but inverse is a bit non trivial okay so you have to do some work to show that the inverse exists it's, it's, it's possible so this this is a field okay so clearly if p is not 2 addition and subtraction are different operations minus 1 and plus 1 are not the same in this field in general okay for, but for p equals 2 it becomes something really really simple okay there are also other fields but we will see them later on i don't want to go into them in more detail we'll come back and maybe revisit this field also later on okay so i just wanted to quickly show this but for gf2 it is very very simple okay so it's very easy to show or see that it is a field okay the addition and multiplication are very very trivial multiplication is really nothing you multiply by 0 what happens you get 0 multiply by 1 you get the same thing.
okay so it is a very very trivial multiplicate okay so the next thing is vector spaces what is the question it's okay you can ask what is not trivial in inverse oh, it's trivial it's trivial <laughs> <laughs> it requires some work i think very possible I'm not saying it's impossible at least Uh, it requires some work. Okay, a vector space. Okay, so let's see. So how do I uh, how do I define a vector space? A set V is said to be a vector space over a field F. if okay so you need a lot of conditions okay okay so there should be first of all an additive operation in v okay so you need a okay so so v has so there should be two operations the first one is the addition operation okay you should be able to add two vectors okay so there should be a binary operation plus on v such that v comma plus is an abelian group okay so you need a you need a you need to be an abelian group okay i could have started out by saying v is an abelian group for instance but i mean i just wanted to put it down as another separate condition so you need to be able to add two vectors any two elements you have in your vector space you should be able to add them okay so that's the first condition that makes it addition the other thing is the scalar multiplication okay that's where the field f comes in okay so so far the field f has not come in the field f will come in in a scalar multiplication okay you need an operation dot okay which is dot or it might even be skipped okay so whenever i say dot the product operation we usually don't write right i mean a dot b we write it as simply a b okay so it's either the vacuous operation or the dot okay dot which is a mapping from f cross v to v okay so that's the definition of a scalar multiplication what is f cross v you have a pair one belonging to f the other belonging to the vector space okay and it takes you to the vector space itself so that's the scalar multiplication okay so it needs an addition under which v becomes an abelian group so the addition is particularly closed and then it the vector space also needs a scalar multiplication okay so if i should say there exists an addition if there exists a scalar multiplication etc okay so there should be a scalar multiplication operation which goes from f cross v to v okay so basically we usually think of this as a scalar f multiplying the vector v giving you another vector v okay so this is the these are the two conditions and then of course there are uh, this the distributivity condition okay so if you have dot distributing over the plus and all that okay so i'm going to skip some of the other conditions there are a few others okay so it needs some work to precisely write it down so for instance if you have uh, a dot u plus v what should happen it should be the same as a dot u plus a dot v okay so for a in for all a in f and u comma v in Okay, so such conditions will be there. I think this is the only other condition. I'm not sure if there is any other condition. There is also the other condition. So, for instance, a b times u should be the same as a times b u. So, all the usual things that you associate. So, this is for all a comma b in f and uh, u in v. Okay. So, there are several other simple things like what you expect for distribution and all that in scalar multiplication, which you might intu intuitively know. it's axiomatized in the definition okay so crucially you should remember that there are two operations in any vector space the first one is an addition which makes it an abelian group the second one is a scalar multiplication which allows for multiplying any vector by a scalar from some field okay so that's where the field will explicitly enter okay so so the most standard examples 
are usually what are called finite dimensional vector spaces okay. So these finite dimensional vector spaces are the easiest and nicest examples. Okay, and we will we will uh, more or less fully study only finite dimensional vector spaces. Okay, so there is a lot of theory behind this. You can you have to you can start carefully start from the axioms and show a lot of things. But it turns out all finite dimensional vector spaces have a very simple form. Okay, what is that form? There will be one dimension number called which is usually denoted let us say n okay and then there will be a field f and all finite dimensional vector spaces will be of the form f n okay. So this is how the form will be okay. So all finite dimensional vector spaces you have a field you have a field f okay and the vector space of dimension n. Okay, so if you denote it uh, is simply Fn. Okay, what is Fn? What is this notation Fn? I used it before, 0, 1, n or something. So basically, you take n elements from F. Okay, so an arbitrary element of Fn will look look like what? Will be a tuple, right? So that is the basic idea. So it will be if you, if you denote it uh, let me see usually you can denote it as let us say V it will be a tuple V1, V2, Vn and each Vi will belong to F okay. So you might be used to thinking of vector spaces like this. So immediately when I said a vector space you might have thought about this okay but this is not the way it is strictly defined you have to define it axiomatically as some abelian group with a scalar multiplication operation okay there are there are vector spaces which may not look like this okay so it looks strange also but if you restrict to something called finite dimension which you can prove very carefully you can show most vector spaces of interest at least in error control coding will have this form okay so if you have dimension n it will be fn okay f is your field and all you have to do worry about is a tuple over that field okay so, so this gives us tools to view 0, 1, n as a vector space okay. So I wanted to see 0, 1, n as a vector space. So now you see how to see now it is maybe quite obvious how you can see 0, 1, n as a vector space okay. So how would I do it 0, 1, n is simply what is the same as sorry it is the same as f2 n or g of 2 n okay. So the set of all n bit vectors is the n dimensional vector space over the binary field f 2 g of 2 okay. So this is the set of all okay. So let me be careful here. So there are two things here on the left hand side you have set of all n bit vectors. which can be thought of as the n dimensional vector space over over f2 okay so this f2 is also called the binary binary field okay so this 0 1 n is also called a nd binary vector space So now let us quickly check that this is indeed a vector space in case there are, there are any questions let me know is there any question at this point does it seem more or less okay it is okay all right. So now I have to tell you how to do addition and scalar multiplication in this vector space okay. So it is quite easy you might have so you might have definitely seen it but anyway I will see the I will write it down addition in fn is what how will you add two things vector u plus vector v is simply 
u 1 plus v 1, u 2 plus v 2, so on till u n plus v n. And what is this plus? The plus of f, okay, remember, I mean it is very tempting to say modulo p, I mean I never said f is f p, okay. so f is a general abstract field, okay. it has an addition operation defined on it. I take two vectors u and v and add them from f n, I can do component wise addition. This is what you do in R n for instance, okay. you do the real addition component wise. What is the scalar multiplication? Okay, what is this operation? The dot of f. Okay. So, so all the linear algebra that you might have learnt, okay, for instance, Gaussian elimination, elimination particularly, okay, things about linear independence. Okay, so what is linearly dependent? What is linearly independent? and uh, basis vectors, subspaces, everything applies to what? An arbitrary vector space defined over an field, any field f. Okay. So, you might have learnt only over the reals and complexes, you might have seen a lot of exercises only using reals and complexes, but all the theory, theory of dimension, linear independence, basis, how do you, how do, you do Gaussian elimination, row reduced echelon form, everything applies to an arbitrary vector space defined over a finite field. Okay. The only things you need are the axioms. Okay. The only things you use again and again are the axioms, nothing else is needed. Okay. So, this is uh, sometimes of surprise to people if you have not seen it before, but hopefully it is you will accept it. Okay. Like I said, we do not have time to go over this in too much detail, but hopefully it is uh, clear. Okay. All right. So, okay. so so maybe i should uh, mention a few of the few of the things which are important but i'll i'll mention it when as we as we go along i think at this point i should not confuse you okay all right so so particularly in the binary vector space 0 1 n okay okay addition of two vectors will be what addition is you can think of it as component wise mod 2 addition or if you want a very much very much a digital systems terminology it is bit wise xor okay so that's what addition is it's just simply a bit wise xor and this what is multiplication it's actually trivial right multiplication scalar multiplication is trivial in what way is it trivial if you multiply by 0, what do you get? 0. If you multiply by 1, you get the same thing. Okay. So, the multiplication is very, very trivial in this uh, GF2 vector space. Okay. In particular, if you do this, what will happen? If I take one vector u and then add it to the itself, what will happen? You get 0. Okay. So, that is something you will get in GF2, which might be a bit strange. Okay. So, you take a non zero vector, add it to itself, you get 0. Okay. So, it, this can happen in these vector spaces. So, it is a bit curious, it is a curious vector space that way. Okay. So, it is not, uh, it might be surprising to you. Okay. So, let me, let me uh, move ahead. Okay. So, we wanted to see uh, C 0 1 n as a vector space uh, because of, uh, because of some, some reasons, we will we'll come to that soon enough. Okay. So, so so that's hopefully clear why 0 1 n is a vector space why the set of all n bit vectors can be seen as a vector space hopefully that's clear okay so now let's go back to our linear code definition okay so linear encoder definition i'm sorry okay what was the definition of a linear encoder we have g which is a k cross n binary matrix which was the generator matrix, presumably in systematic form, but whatever. Okay. 
and then the code word was formed as m times g. Okay. So, what did I write down this operation as? So, if you think of the rows of g as g 1 through g k, So, now maybe the linear term, linear combination term will make sense. Okay. So, you can think of each of these g 1 through g k s as vectors in 0 1 n. Okay. So, and then what you do is simply linear combination. Okay. So, now I am going to say these g i s this is a vector in f 2 n. Okay. So, now I am going to think of g i as a vector in f 2 n and clearly what is happening here is a linear combination. Okay. So, that is the that is a nice motivation and interpretation in the 0 1 n vector space. Okay. So, so, this, this brings back and hopefully ties up some things for people. Okay. So, we will see this in more detail as we go along. Okay. So, these g i s which are the rows of g remember these are rows of g. Okay. These are all vectors in f 2 n okay, in the binary vector space and when I form a code word what am I doing? I am taking linear combinations of a set of vectors from a vector space all possible linear combinations right right so that's a strange thing for people to get used to so for instance so far you might have dealt with only rn okay and when you say all possible linear combinations in rn how many possible linear combinations will there be infinitely many but in f2n what happens you have only finitely many linear combinations okay in f2n if i take k vectors and i form all possible linear combinations how many possible linear combinations are there only 2 power k. Okay. But go back to the definition of what is called a subspace. What is a subspace? Okay. You take a subset of say you take a set of vectors and form all possible linear combinations of them you get what is called a subspace. Okay. The same definition holds in F 2 n also. Okay. So, nothing changes there okay. even though you have only a finite number that is all the linear combinations that there is. Okay. So, now you have a may be a strikingly new interpretations for this m times g operation. What is m times g actually doing? It is defining a subspace of 0 1 n. Okay. So, that is the abstract way of viewing this operation. Okay. So, so far we just viewed it in a very functional way. We started with the vectors. I said you define these vectors and take all possible linear combinations to get code words. The abstract way to view this is these vectors g i define a or span a subspace of the binary vector space 0 1 n. Okay. So, that is another way of defining the linear encoder or the linear code. Okay. So, by the way one more definition which I did not make before is what is a code. Okay. Code is set of all code words. Okay, so, this is the code. Okay. It is a simple definition, I guess the encoder is more crucial. The set of all code words is the code. Okay. So, if I define a linear encoder, the code that I get from it is in fact a subspace of the binary vector space f 2 n. What dimensional subspace? less than or equal to k. When is it equal to k? When the g i s are linearly independent. Now, I can comfortably use the word linearly independent because I know it is a vector space. I know whether I know the linear independence is properly defined. It is not anything difficult for me to define. Okay. All right. So, if you are not used to reading about vector spaces as in an abstract way, this might be a little bit surprising, but anything you read about R n pretty much holds in f 2 n also. Okay, linear independence is the same. How would you define linear independence? 
the all zero right so if you have you have an abstract way of defining linear independence go back and check that you can define it that way okay so all those things can be done you can do quick gaussian elimination to figure out how the, how everything works okay so everything can be done without uh, without uh, without too much struggle and like i said i'm not going to go back and review this in too much detail so let me just summarize what i said in the next slide okay so a linear code is usually defined as a subspace of of the binary vector space of a binary vector space let me just say okay so if i want a length n linear code what should i be looking for i should be looking for a subspace of of what of f2n okay so how can i define a subspace of f2n usually it's defined by a set of basis vectors okay so that's where the notion of basis vectors will come in okay so subspaces have basis vectors okay so these basis vectors are basically the what so far we've been thinking of the generator matrix so these basis vectors are usually the rows of generator matrix okay so of course you have to assume full rank here but okay usually rows of generator matrix okay so that's the way you have to think about a linear code in terms of a vector space okay yes i find the code words as m times g okay but in as a subspace of f2n the rows of g are defining a space okay is usually also called the row space of g okay that specific subspace okay so this linear code that i'm defining with the generator matrix g is in fact a subspace of f2n okay and if rank of g is equal to k then i have a k dimensional subspace of f2n okay so if rank of g is equal to k you have a k dimensional subspace okay okay so this view is is very critical it gives you a lot of intuition on top of what you might get from the simple matrix multiplication definition okay so m times g is okay but you get a subspace of a subspace is, 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 is better structure okay all right so next question i'm going to ask is quite easy but let's uh, get it out of the way so if if i think of f2n okay so some simple questions to to fix some ideas think of f2n okay it's the n dimensional vector space over f2 what is the basis for f2n okay so you usually take this canonical basis what's called a canonical basis for f2n okay so we will always use this canonical basis which is basically yeah so what's called ei so 1 followed by a bunch of zeros and then you would take 0 1 followed by zeros and finally you will end up with what 0 0 followed with 1 okay so my writing is going very bad when i come to the bottom of the tablet hopefully it's clear okay so this is a canonical basis for the entire vector space okay so for the subspace you will have a different basis which is g1 g2 gk etc okay so let's go back to this uh, example that we had maybe see some see some subspace ideas in okay so we had g to be equal to 
101110101 right this was one of our examples okay so the linear code defined by g okay is a this what a linear code okay is a three dimensional subspace of 0 1 what 6 or f 2 6 okay so f 2 6 is a little bit better because then you know a bit more about the field it's a little bit more representational okay so it's a three dimensional subspace of f 2 6 okay and uh, So, there are there are several properties. So, once you say it is a subspace, what happens if I take two vectors from a subspace and add them? You will still remain in the same subspace. What happens if I take a vector in a subspace and multiply with a scalar? Remain in the same subspace. So, so those properties which are easy to prove simply with c equals m g also, I mean you can prove it with that also. If you define the code as simply c equals m times g, you can show that m 1 g plus m 2 g is the same as m 1 plus m 2 into g right. So, you see what happens if you have c 1 equals m 1 g and then c 2 equals m 2 g what is c 1 plus c 2 m 1 g plus m 2 g which is m 1 plus m 2 times g this is from basic matrix operations right. So, what is m 1 plus m 2 into g? Okay, so, this is some m prime into g which is also a valid code word ok right. So, just by defining it as m times g I can prove these properties, but once you know it is a subspace intuitively all these things are much more clear you know, it is a, it's a closed subspace. So, if you add two vectors you should get another vector in the same subspace. So, if you multiply a vector by a scalar you should get another vector in the same subspace ok. So, so this linear code defined by g has a set of code words I can also think of each code word as a vector in f 2 n and all these vectors together make a k dimensional subspace ok. So, let me summarize all these things in the next uh, slide. So, if you have a linear code defined by a k by n generator matrix g with rank let us say equal to k ok. This is equivalent to the following description have a k dimensional vector subspace of f 2 n with basis as what the rows of g. So, in particular what happens is sum of two code words well two or more of course right. So, if you say two code words then two or more also the same thing applies equals another code word ok. So, it is closed under addition ok. So, that is the linear property and then well, in F 2 the scalar multiplication is really trivial right. So, there is nothing really to do if you multiply by 0 what happens you get 0 if you multiply by 1 you get the code word itself ok. So, I am not going to write that down, but another interesting thing is the all 0 vector will be what yeah, will be a code word ok. So, it is a code word of every linear code. Okay. 
So even with the m times g definition, it's obvious. I mean, how do you how do you get the all zero code word? Take the all zero message. Okay, so whatever whatever you define as g, you will get the all zero code word. Okay, but from a subspace point of view also, it's pleasing, right? Every subspace will definitely have the all zero vector in it. Okay, so it will pass through the all zero vector. So you have that. Okay, so this view I think is 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 important to take in. I mean, it's an important view of a linear code. So yes, from an implementation point of view at the encoder, the view that is interesting is m times g, okay, maybe g in systematic form, okay, that is fine. So you reproduce the message and then compute a subset of parities to get uh, what you want. Okay. What is interesting from an abstract theoretical point of view, which has a lot of practical utility soon enough, particularly when we move to the decoder, I will talk more about it, is this vector space view. Okay. If you view the set of all n bit uh, vectors, okay, n bit numbers if you want anything, as a vector space which is f 2 n. Okay. The addition is bitwise XOR, multiplication is the trivial multiplication, the scalar field is f 2 0 1. When you view it that way, then this m times g, the rows of g have a special meaning. Okay. They in fact span the row, span a space which is a subspace and that becomes your code. Okay. So, your code itself is a collection of code words which is actually thought of as a vector subspace. All these things are vectors in this vector space. You have a vector subspace of a particular dimension. Okay. So, what happens when the rank of g is less than k? I'm sorry. Yeah, you have a lower dimensional vector space. Okay. So, it may be k minus 1 or k minus 2 or whatever. How do you find the basis? In that case, in general, rows after the reduction. Yeah, you do row reduction. Eventually, the whatever is linearly dependent will become zero. Okay, that's one thing. And then, now you see how. See, one more thing you know is when you do row reduction or Gaussian elimination, what does not change? The span of all the vectors does not change. When you take a row, uh, a matrix, and do row operations and do row reduction, what does not change is the row space. The row space remains the same. So now you see the statement I made that any code can be made into systematic code, systematic form is very obvious, right? Why is it obvious? Yeah, so it's a linear vector space. I can always reduce into row reduced echelon form, and I'll get IP. Okay, so you do the Gaussian elimination, you reduce it to systematic form. Okay, so we saw an example where something in non-systematic form can be reduced to a systematic form, and you might wonder if MG defined with the non systematic form is the same as the mg defined with the systematic form okay so it turns out the code is the same okay so we'll see see that is very easily seen from these kind of vector space viewpoints okay so 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 so, so i think i have about 2 minutes left so let me see let me re let me reiterate the systematic form a little bit more okay so let's go back to the systematic form What are we doing in the systematic form? You start with the g, which is say arbitrary, okay, arbitrary vectors. You do a series of row operations, okay. So let's say we also allow column swaps, okay. So this is a bit of a troubling thing in uh, in linear algebra. In linear algebra, you would never allow a column swap, right? I mean, it's not allowed. Okay, so we will allow column swaps. Why? Why? Why do we allow column swaps? Okay. Because from an operational point of view, it's the same. You know, whether you have some column appearing here or later, the only thing it changes is the sequence that of which, which the bits go out in the code word. From from an operational point of view, for us, it's equivalent. Okay, so column swaps will allow. Okay, if you do this, you get a systematic form which is IP. So, so once you do this, you can now define mg, okay, one set for all m in uh, 0, 1k, f2k, and then mg prime for all m in 0, 1k, okay. So, let us say I mean, for simplicity, we'll assume that no column swaps were needed. Okay, so for now, 
just to keep it simple, we'll assume no column swaps is needed. If column swaps are needed, you'll have to undo the column swaps here for the statement to be true. Okay. So, what do you think is the sign that I can put in the middle here? Okay. You can, in general, say definitely equivalent. Okay. If there are no column swaps, what can I say? Equal. Okay. So it will be equal under this condition. If there are column swaps, what is the only thing that can happen? The order of the bits in which they appear will change. Okay, you can do a permutation and change it to equal sign. Okay. So that is the this is the nature. Okay, so this is the meaning of saying any code, any linear code, can be put into systematic form. Okay, so you get the same code. Is that okay? Okay, so you do all these. You know, row operations are just invertible multiplications, right? So it's just you can undo every single row operation that you do. It's no problem. Okay, so I guess this is not the main uh, last point. This is the main thing that you should uh, take away from these two lectures. Okay, so what is a linear code? A linear code is a vector subspace of a binary vector space, n-dimensional binary vector space. Okay, so such a code is also denoted as an n-k code. Okay, so this is a very popular notation. N comma k code. So when I say an n comma k linear code, what I mean is a k-dimensional subspace of f two n. Okay, how do I specify that subspace? I have to specify k linearly independent vectors as basis vectors for my uh, subspace. Okay, so what we'll see in the next class is there is an equivalent way of defining subspaces. You might have learnt it in basic three D algebra. Okay, so if you do, if you want to define a plane, you either define two vectors in a plane or what do you do? You define a normal. Okay, so, what is the property of the normal? Normal is orthogonal to every vector. So, to define orthogonality, what do you need? Dot product. Okay, so, we have not talked about a dot product. So, what we will do next is define a dot product and then we will see how to define vector spaces or vector subspaces using normal vectors, so to speak. Okay, so, they are called something else or dual, dual vectors. We will use dual vectors to define uh, define vector spaces and that is a very, very powerful tool. Okay, so, more than the generator matrix, you should understand the dual space. Okay, that is it. Thanks.